Hello, this episode we will discuss the arch expansion and tooth extraction uh, during the orthodontic treatment. Arch expansion can be slow or rapid using removable or fixed appliances. Slow arch expansion brings about mainly dental alveolar expansion, whereas rapid maxillary expansion brings about skeletal as well as dental alveolar expansion. Uh, we will see when each of them is indicated and what is uh, their advantages and disadvantages of each one of them. The rapid maxillary expansion or the RME appliances are the best appliances for the orthopedic ex- which means that the changes that are produced uh, affect the skeletal ch- structures mainly the um, the mid palatine suture what is the midline palatine suture it, it is the suture that connects the premaxilla the palatine process and the maxillary process these three bones are connected with this mint line palatine suture and this suture is our main focus on um, applying the force to make the expect expansion desired so using these appliances is indicated for posterior crossbite class 3 malocclusion that is dental or skeletal uh, also some a cleft palate patients and uh, if there is any problems with the nasal uh, airway uh, because uh, the the changes that happen in the maxilla affect the nose and vice versa and because the 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 maxillary process is considered to be the floor of the nose it is contradicted to use this kind of appliances when the deciduous tooth have been uh, resorbed half of its roots so we will not have the enough retention for the rapid maxillary expansion what happens when we activate the expansion uh, the suture opens in a fan shaped and we can see that a midline diastema has been developed between the two incisors here we can see it clinically after we activated the expansion we have seen the diastema between the incisors this uh, expansion uh, will uh, be regenerated and reclosed uh, by the t- uh, transeptal fiber traction within three to five months. Uh, so it is advised to uh, put a retention uh, device uh, in after we finish the uh, expansion to uh, maintain the results of what we got other f- effect uh, of using the RMEs uh, on the maxillary posterior teeth is the buckle tilting this is it the buckle tilting of the posterior teeth also some extrusion of maxillary posterior teeth to some extent time of application is usually in the deciduous or early mixed dentition but we have said that we will should make sure that the root has enough uh, length rapid uh, expansion removable appliances are usually made of um, the expansion screw uh, adam uh, clasps for retention and an anterior bow for retention also uh, that are all combined 
uh, using an acrylic uh, plate uh, it is usually activated using uh, this screw here where we uh, turn it uh, whether by 45 degrees which means a quarter um, rotation or a half rotation which is 90 degrees uh, for the duration it is usually uh, if we are doing a quarter uh, quarter rotation it is four times a day and if we were doing it uh, half uh, rotation two times in a day to get the quick expansion that we want and these are the types of the screws expansion screw and this is the arrow of the direction that we should uh, do the rotation at uh, now let's see what are the fixed appliances that we can use to do the rapid expansion and they are divided into two categories the first one that is dependent on the tissue borne appliances we have two this is the dirty this one two and a tooth borne appliances which are also two types uh, we will start with the first one this is it the diri schistweller type and um, this is it uh, it is composed of a uh, premolar and molar bands that are connected to the an acrylic base and that has uh, at the middle of it the uh, expansion screw uh, which means that we are are getting um, a retention from the tooth and from the tissue be uh, underneath the acrylic uh, plate the second one is the has type expansion uh, it is has the same concept with with the addition of a looped uh, wire which give support we have a, a lingual wire and a buckle wire uh, also this type of uh, fixed rme appliance and depend on uh, tissue and tooth uh, force generalization so uh, the idea of the has uh, device is creating bodily movement and less dental tipping when the acrylic palatal coverage is added to support the appliance we are permitting force to be generalized not only against the teeth but also against the underlying soft and hard palatal tissues and the other two devices which are called the hyrex type expander and the isa scone type expansion they do not involve the acrylic base and they are all stainless steel this is the hyrex type expansion we have seen that uh, the bands that are on the molar and the premolars uh, then are connected uh, to uh, these uh, wires that are connected to the expansion screw this is before the expansion and this is after word and we can see the difference this is the first one that we discussed the has the type where we have a an acrylic base also we can add what is called an acrylic uh, acrylic splint over the tooth to increase the bite uh, the second uh, device that depends on tooth uh, on tooth uh, support only is the Isakson type of expansion uh, the b instead of having the screw inside we will have what is called a spring uh, and the activation is from by uh, pushing this inside this uh, piece to get an, uh, a spring that will be reflected again 
and give it give us the expansion effect that we want um, uh, when we want uh, to add this uh, device to the to the mouth we first uh, scale the teeth and polish them and then we do bond um, well, then we do uh, etching uh, and use the glass inomer for the uh, cementation now let's talk about the slow arch expansion uh, if we have time uh, before the uh, the jump of uh, of growth which means in the purity uh, area and we can avoid using the 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 fast arch expansion it is more favorable to use the slow arch expansion to make sure to maintain the results that we will get and to get the enough enough retention regarding the uh, on the dental alveolar um, level the changes pr produced are primarily on dental change or dental changes with very minimum amount of skeletal changes if they if the if this is expansion is used in older adults but if they are used in the uh, deciduous or the early mixed dentition we can have both skeletal and dental changes short uh, a slow arch expansion is more favorable uh, because applying light continuous forces will allow normal arch dimension to develop at any age without undue tipping of abutment teeth. Also, there will be a more increased uh, activity of the uh, cells that will uh, repair the uh, widening process. And we will get more f uh, physiological stability uh, that will prevent the relapse of the expansion. There are three types of appliances that are used for this uh, process. Uh, the jig screw is can be this is it, can be used for the lo lower arch or the upper arch. Uh, we can see that it uses the uh, jig screw uh, that is held by a an acrylic uh, base. Uh, with some uh, retention whether they are atoms on the molars or uh, on the labial uh, side uh, anteriorly uh, what is different about it that we will do smaller pitch and less frequent for the screw which means that we will turn it less frequently with l uh, less rotation the coffin spring uh, has the same idea but we have an omega shaped uh, 1.24 millimeter uh, wire that is placed in the uh, in the mid palatal region if you want to activate it we have two ways the first is uh, by pulling the sides apart manually these the, the pulling, pulling them manually expanding them ma manually the other one is uh, by using a three prong pillar and bending the omega wire at the center of the base here this is the second way uh, this is the third appliance which is the quad helic appliance we know quad is usually used referring to number four so in this appliance we have four springs uh, and it can be used as a removable appliance or the uh, the lingual the lingual uh, arms uh, if they are soldered to the <clears throat> palatal surface of the molar bands and then they are considered to be a fixed appliance uh, this uh, this uh, this space is between these two helices uh, um, is called an anterior bridge 
and this is the posterior bridge that has have two arms and these are important when we are going to activate this appliance we have several ways of activation the first is by stretching the molar bands these apart before the cementation of the molar bands stretching them here the second one is to use a, a three a prong pillar and we activate the appliance at two points at the anterior bridge and the second is in the posterior bridge uh, in the two with uh, in the two arms so we are activating three parts another way of activation is only activating the uh, the anterior bridge so we get an expansion in this area uh, another way of 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 you want uh, a unilateral expansion we will expand we will activate this um, uh, this arm only or this arm only whether that which direction we want it so that's it for the expansion now let's talk about the extraction uh, we know now now that extraction uh, of teeth uh, can be an indication uh, when we are going to do an orthodontic treatment it's worth to say to say that back in 1907 uh, the father of or modern orthodontics Edward Angel was the major proponent of no extraction philosophy he was uh, he had an image that if crowded teeth were aligned in a correct relation which with each other uh, the masticatory system will result in the growth of the jaw and in turn we will have an adequate space for the dentition however this theory was not applicable because we have seen that uh, the tooth after they were aligned they relapsed to the crowding and they re-showed a malocclusion in their position and there was no any um, compensation of the bone for their placement or any growth uh, so uh, it was uh, suggested by his student Charles Tweed in 1940s that extraction must be done what he did that he brought 100 failure cases of previously treated patients without extraction and he retreated them with extraction of four first premolars and he did not charge them any fee he presented his results on the uh, angel society in chicago where he showed that he got good post treatment stability with good alignment without the crowding so by the early 19 uh, 60s extraction of teeth, teeth was fairly generally accepted in the orthodontic practice when is extraction uh, indicated it is indicated when there is a, a arch tool arch length tooth material discrepancy uh, and which means that where where the total tooth material is in excess of the arch length uh, we can do the model analysis which is the caries analysis and the arch perimeter analysis to assess the amount of space needed for proper alignment and to select the teeth for extraction if you got four millimeter discrepancy then there is no need for extraction if we got five to nine millimeter of discrepancy then uh, we can uh, discuss the decision of extraction if there is any other factors that uh, um, encourages this 10 millimeter or more extraction almost always indicated 
in angels class one malocclusion cases we usually uh, we do extraction on both arches the maxilla and the mandibular in uh, class two malocclusions the extraction is, is usually done uh, in the upper maxillary arch in class uh, three malocclusion uh, we extract in the mandibular arch only now let's uh, see the choice of the teeth for extraction starting with with the, the maxillary central incisor we know that uh, they have an aesthetic uh, purpose so we should avoid extracting them as possible but in some cases when they are uh, impacted uh, that cannot and cannot be aligned properly we can we should extract them if they are severely fractured or there is a severely dilacerated root which cannot be moved orthodontically which means that the root is uh, wide yani super wide for the maxillary lateral incisors uh, if they are congenitally uh, missing what we do is we extract the other side to balance the arch symmetry like in this case we extracted the laterals in both sides and we uh, pulled the teeth distally is a rule for the mandibular incisor is to ex to avoid it as possible because extracting them will uh, lead to collapse of the lower arch and crowding will re-happen again also we will deepen the bite the canines although they are the strongest the longest and they give excellent anchorage to the alveolar in the alveolar bone canines have a quite long way to travel uh, from their development position near the orbit to the position in their arch so they have more uh, possibility to be impacted in some cases they may be est extracted here the mandibular right permanent lateral incisor uh, is totally lingually blocked by the rest of the teeth and it cannot be aligned so it is extracted uh, the first part premolars when we need anchorage first premolar extraction is preferred over the second premolar and there they are extracted as part of serial extraction produ producers uh, undertaken in early mixed dentition to give to give the uh, permanent canine uh, space to erupt probably uh, the second premolar are extracted when anchorage demand is minimum which means when where an anchor loss is actually desirable and the extraction space is closed by the retention of anterior as well as by mesial movement of the molars first molar should be avoided because to be uh, extracted because it is the key of uh, occlusion uh, in some cases when there is um, grossly decayed or there is an um, an open bite uh, we can extract the first molar the second molar is extracted for distalization of the first molar and in open bite cases extracting third molar does not yield space for correction of crowding uh, there are two types of uh, extraction procedures the balanced one is that when we extract a tooth from the right side of the arch we extract the uh, same tooth from the left side of the arch to create symmetry in the arch and to avoid any midline shift the compensatory compensatory extraction is when we uh, extract an, an opposing teeth uh, in an arch uh, of the other arch which means if we extract the third molar of the maxillary arch we will extract the third molar of the mandibular arch to prevent any occlusion uh, disharmony 
and that's it for today.